Astro seems to improve by the minute, and this year has held so many incredible updates. I just want to go over five of my favorite features released this year in no particular order. You ready? Let's jump in. First of all, and probably my favorite, the content layer. The new content layer, basically Content Collections 2.0, means you can now pull in data from any source for use in content collections. In the content config file, you can now pull in any local file or group of files, even if they're not in the content folder. This means you can read from a single JSON or YAML file, for instance, and read the data to any content collection. But what really makes the content layer powerful is loaders. Write your own loader or use a community loader to pull in data from any data location. Notion, Stripe, Cloudinary, Strapi, you name it. Or you can just return data from an API endpoint with a custom loader. But it gets even better. You can define a custom schema to type the content and get easy autocomplete on the front end. Believe it or not, it gets better still. With Zod, you can transform the data from your schema to reshape and define the data. The data flexibility story is amazing here. You can literally switch out your data layer and then just transform the data from your new source to fit your existing setup. That's it. Your site works as expected. Two, server islands. Astro popularized the concept of island architecture where you can sprinkle in client-side JavaScript for particular components, but keep the rest of your page static. Server Islands does the same thing, but on the server. With an SSR adapter enabled, mark any Astro component with server colon defer to skip rendering the component on page load. You can cache the static page behind a CDN and even provide some initial placeholder content with the fallback indicator. When the dynamic HTML has loaded, a small inline script replaces the server island and the rendered HTML is added in in place of the fallback. This extra fine control provides just one more tool in Astro's rendering strategy. I'm using it in places where I want custom info, but I don't need the interaction a UI framework like React gives me. In other words, I can get dynamic customizations like the room count and other recommended trips without having to load in all of React or write this all in client-side JavaScript. I can just use an Astro component that's server deferred. Number three, the ENV API. Environment variables are a pain in the TypeScript era. Beyond not getting any autocompletion or type safety, it's also unclear where it's safe to use your environment variables. The new ENV API in Astro fixes both the type safety and runtime safety problems. Define a schema and additional options for the context and runtime access point, among other details like the actual content of the variable. Then use the explicit import to ingest the variables in your application. Not only do you get type safety and autocompletion, you're now always certain your variables can only be used where you want to use them, on the client or on the server. For server variables, you can further define if you want to allow them to be included in your bundle build code or keep them entirely secret. All around, it's a great DX upgrade without requiring a lot of DX work. Number four, Astro Actions. Astro Actions handle type safe data fetching, JSON parsing, and input validation without all the boilerplate. We've long had the ability to write a custom API endpoint in Astro, but it was always up to you to parse, validate, and type the data. Astro Actions can be called from client-side components and HTML forms. This means you can keep your tech stack, like React, Svelte, vanilla script tags, or Astro components, and get all the benefits of using Astro Actions. For forms, you can set the action attribute to your Astro Action to ensure your form will properly submit even without client-side JavaScript enabled. Number five, the Container API. The Container API lets you render Astro components outside of an Astro application. Essentially, you can render any Astro component to a string. This enables passing rendered Astro components to UI frameworks like React, and also makes it easier to render Astro components inside testing frameworks like VTest. While more abstract, this feature has a lot of room to grow, and I think it will hold some special improvements as they continue to expand it. If you use Astro, I'm curious which of these you like the best, and if there's anything I left out of my top five that you would have included. If you're new to Astro and want to learn more, I have a course called LearnAstro.dev, which is in its final pre-release version. You can get it at the cheapest possible. Right now, we're using a Black Friday discount as well. You can check all that out down below. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.